You're on. Okay. It takes a minute. What treasures do you have tonight? What are these tiny things making noises? Rocks. Oh boy. We love to eat rocks. Do you like rocks for dinner, Freddie? Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy, that is tiny. Let's hope that doesn't end up in the duck orange. There's two tiny ones. The pink one and not very tiny. But that one is very big. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining that in. This is the pink one. Okay. Is that a duck? Uh, so. Tonight we're going to cook one of my favorite, or our favorite things to eat, duck, and we're going to do it in a fairly classical, but because it's me, we're going to bend the classical nature of it, um, manner, and that's duck l'orange, or uh, an orange duck. Um, I've got two kinds, you want to come up here, Miss Chuck Buck? I've got two different kinds of duck here, and I want you to see the stark contrast. Uh, this is the Pekin duck, not Peking, like the style of Chinese duck, Pekin, which is the breed of duck, it's the white Pekin duck. Um, it is, of the fat is a little bit thinner, more closer to like a chicken skin. Um, the meat is just a little bit mi more mild, and it's also a little bit softer and more tender. Uh, I would kind of say that like, if this is a beef steak, this is a veal steak. Um, this is the kind of duck, it's my favorite kind of duck to serve at the restaurant at Le Pigeon. Um, it's size wise, it makes a nice portion. Uh, it cooks up really beautiful. It doesn't put off quite as much fat. Um, and I just think it's really, really tender and you can kind of be a little bit, it's more forgiving with how you cook it. And then what you have here is the McGray. This is gonna be your more classic duck that you see in a restaurant, much more popular. Um, uh, of a duck breast, you can obviously see the size difference in the breast. Um, this is gonna have a little bit of a denser fat cap, take a little bit longer to render out. Um, and you, you can see right here, there's a lot of duck, but there's duck has a good amount of fat. Um, and so this, the McGray, is actually a crossbreed of a, a Moulard, or a Muscovy, sorry, Muscovy, and this white Pekin. So when you breed these ducks, you get this guy right here. Uh, this is a great piece of duck for doing, for instance, um, like duck prosciutto because of its large nature. Um, and when we would serve this in the restaurant, we would cut it in half as a portion. So it has, we're gonna, just gonna clean it up real quick. This recipe is a two pan recipe. It's a wonderful dinner. Um, actually, before we clean the duck up, let's go over here. Let's take a look at our ingredients that we have set up. Um, we're going to make a pan sauce. So one pan, we're going to be cooking these ducks, and then we're going to take them out while they rest, just like the steak, if you follow along. Daddy, I'm on a And then we're going to be adding some of this bourbon or cognac, if you have it. Um, or, orange juice. Hey, Freddie. Orange juice, where we're going to veer slightly off course. Uh, is I think that with the bourbon, the orange, lime, I think that a little bit of this mild curry is gonna really make this dish pop. It's gonna rock. Um, and then what we're gonna we're gonna use some honey for sweetness, a little shallot and garlic in there. And then uh, to finish that pan sauce, we're gonna I'm gonna teach you guys how to mount it with butter. And this is a technique you can take into making a chicken breast with white wine or. A lot of different ways. And then the other thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a real classic French glazed vegetable. I've got wonderful carrots, just cut into rounds, chipolini onions. I wrote eight, I think, on my recipe for you guys. These were a little small, so I got a couple extra. And then turnips. Turnips are a very classic vegetable in uh, French cooking, probably underutilized in the American uh, plate, but um, the contrast with the sweetness of the carrots the earthiness of the turnips and the onion flavor from the chicken is going to be amazing.
Watch yourself, Rucker. I want a pan. What? A pan. You want a pan? Yeah. You have a pan. It's in your hand. What? It's not a real pan. It's a real pan. Do you want to carry it in it? Now okay, it's Okay, so let's clean up these ducts. I've got, this is the, the splash side, the back side. I've taken the tender off. And then there's just what's called a little silver skin. You can see this. It's kind of like a tough membrane or sinew. And I'm just going to slide my knife right under it. Take a little bit off. And that's just going to be a little bit extra chewy. Meat's fairly chewy in the first place, so. Um, you don't want to overly clean. You can see that you could follow this in there for a long ways, but you don't really need to. This looks really good to me. And then the other thing I'm going to do, because it's so fatty, I'm just going to trim if there's any flapping over there. I'm going to trim that. So this looks great. I'll do it to the other one. And then you can save these uh, tenders for something else, if you are so inclined. Where did you buy the duck? I got the duck from Nikki USA, where I get all of my meats from if you're in Portland. Um, and you could also probably pick up some duck, I think Sheridan, uh, if you're in Portland, is a great place, they have it. Um, a lot of high-end grocery stores are going are gonna to carry uh, duck. And so the next important thing, this helps it render. When we're, what we're going to do is, when we're cooking, we're going to slowly cook the duck most of the way on the skin side so that we can mm -hmm. render that fat and get rid of as much of the fat as possible while making the skin really crispy. Old butt face over there is going to keep you entertained for a second. What are you cooking, Freddy? There we go. No, no, all of them on. There you go. <laughs> okay, so the next important thing to do is to score the duck breast. And this, what we want to do, I keep my knife nice and flat. I'm not trying to get too crazy with it. But what this does is this allows the fat to render and the skin to crisp. And you can see, I'm going just down to the skin, or to the flesh. I'm not trying to go through. You don't want to go too deep. So I'm kind of just letting the weight of the knife handle that project there. The weight of the knife? Yeah, just not real, real almost no pressure here. Um, yeah, you can put the excess duck trimmings into stock. Sure, you could use them for whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, the, the if you're going to, you know... If you're going to uh, keep doing duck, you can save them and then you can bread them and fry them and make like chicken tenders, but duck tenders, um, you could just chop them up and saute them real quickly tomorrow morning uh, with some potatoes for breakfast. Um, there's, a, you know, anything you would do with little chicken scraps, you can do with this. So then the Pekin duck, which is smaller, I'm going to treat the same way. Just trimming that silver skin off. But the fat on the Pekin duck is much thinner, so I'm just gonna give it just a couple, because it doesn't need the same treatment here. You can see, does that show up? Yeah. Great. So then the next thing, we always start duck in a cold pan or a room temp, not and we don't need to put any sort of oil in it. So for those of you who love to talk about blend oil, I'm sorry, it's going to be disappointing. We <laughs> are not going to be using oil. I did have a question earlier this week about the best place to buy the blend oil. Well, I it. And I think the, the best place to buy the blend oil is to just go to the store, buy some canola oil and some simple olive oil and just mix it. 75% blend oil and 25% olive oil. No, honey. Because we're in quarantine. Oh, we know what he wants to be in quarantine, Freddie. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just so they don't take forever to cook. I'm going to cut these in half because they're so big. 
Some people are saying happy birthday to you. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. We had a good birthday. We went to In-N-Out Burger. Honey, I know. Freddie wants to play with a friend. Hannah surprised me and took me to the, the place we got married. Yeah, okay. we went to our wedding meadow. So your pan is off right now. The pan is off. Uh, we did not have to wait in line at all for any out burger because we left in the morning. We and were there at 945. We were there at 945. And we were the like fourth or fifth person in line. We got a dozen burgers and we tailgated. Then we brought some home. Ate them later. And um, I ordered a strawberry milkshake and gave eight, drank the whole no, thing. No, 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 no. And I ordered the didn't strawberry even give me milkshake. one sip of it. No, no, no. I ordered the strawberry milkshake. We weren't going to get a milkshake. Then I was like, you know what? We'll get it. No, I said, no I said. No interest in the strawberry milkshake. I said, I wanted a milkshake. And you rolled your eyes. You're like, really? We don't need a milkshake. And I said. That's not at all. You're fabricating this event. That's how I remember <laughs> it. You, no. No, you were like, do you want a milkshake? And I was like, no. And then I was like, yeah. you know what? At the last minute, I was like, you know what? I'll get a milkshake. Because you said no, you were, and I gave you, you a look. Like, mentioned. really? We're here? We're not going to get a milkshake? Are you going on camera? She never wanted a <laughs> <laughs> That was the best shot ever. But, okay, so for the glazed vegetables. I shot you. I've got the carrots. Teaching him The bad turnips. Stuff. And the chip on the onions. And you can see that I've cut the perfect amount to kind of be in a single layer in the pan. And the turnips are going to take a little bit less time. The carrot's going to take the most time to cook. And so they're cut just a little bit thinner. The, everything else is just a little bit thicker. Oh, someone on here, um, Pedro Honey, uh, who I've talked to on my Instagram, um, they got married in Zigzag, and we used to have a house, a cabin in Zigzag. Oh, nice. It's awesome. so beautiful up there. Okay, so a little bit of butter. A little bit of sugar, and I'm going to go ahead, I didn't write in the recipe, but because it sounds fun, I'm going to use a little bit of brown sugar, and what that's going to do is, brown sugar is sugar that has a little bit of molasses in it, and that's going to add a little bit of depth to what we have going on here, which is going to pair with the bright notes of the, uh, of the sauce. And then... Have you eaten at the Skyway? That's our favorite restaurant up there. So both pans were at room temperature, right? Yeah. Yes. They were not on, Colleen. We just turned them on. I just turned the... You know, our stove and floors are so greasy. I mean, we cook constantly, and so we both have to clean it. Gabe just cleaned the stove before this show, which I think is nice. But also, we just kind of... There's a little bit of cumin going in. ...are greasier than the average family, I guess. So you can see the duck was cold, and now as the pan starts to heat, the duck starts to kind of cook slowly. Freddie, don't play down there, please. It's right underneath the stove. No. Go don't play, play on the freeway. Not in front of the stove while we're cooking duck. Get out of there. Come on. Okay, go play. No. Come on. Why don't you make something with your Play-Doh? Make a soup. We're forcing everyone to buy these shirts about your soups, and you're not even making a soup. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add lemon zest. I'm, classically, uh, for glazed vegetables, it would just be salt, a little sugar, water, and butter. But, you know, the Rutgers, we juice things up a little bit. So I've got my carrots, turnips. Oops. Did you season the duck before you put it in the pan? I seasoned it with salt, yeah. Okay. Lemon zest, lemon juice, brown sugar, a little bit of cumin. And that's going to tie our flavor with the curry, with the like the spice flavor. And that's where I said, you know, we've we kind of ripped on it a little bit. Well, enough people here love the Skyway. I think once we're out of quarantine, we should have our Instagram um, gang meet there. That sounds like a great idea. For macaroni and cheese. And then the trick to a very properly, deliciously glazed onion or to glazed vegetable is that you use just the right amount of water and I put, you want to possibly have it come up just about three quarters. Okay, yeah, we got a couple people in on it. Okay, we'll organize it. 
That sounds like fun. I think that'd be so fun. Then we'll meet everybody. And they love us. They would love to have us there. I love it up there. And then I could have an impromptu surprise wedding that you don't know about. We just had one. I want another one. Already? Always. Girl, geez, Louise. I love weddings. A uh, couple of fun things we've got tonight. We're going to garnish these glazed vegetables with, you know, as I was writing this recipe, I was thinking about some stuff that's happening in our garden. We've got this wonderful mint. That flavor is going to go really well with the orange and the curry. And then this is calendula, which is a super aromatic, um, kind of reminds me of like toasted orange flavor. And so I think this is going to be really pretty. And since we're in like full spring, as I'm cooking, I'm looking out at my garden, which I kind of love. And um, I'm feeling inspired to make something pretty tonight because when I think of cooking duck, I think of kind of fine dining. Yeah. And so we're going to go ahead and plate this dish and have it look kind of, hopefully, extra beautiful. Okay. People are excited about the wedding idea. We're all going to wear our Freddy shirts. They're going to, we're going to throw sprinkles at each other. Um, I'm glad you like the bowls. You can buy a set. I'm making everybody even cuter than what you're seeing here because these were the first ones I ever made. Now I'm making really you're good ones. really good. Yeah, I've got way better at them. This person bought a whole duck and they would like some tips on breaking it down. So it would be just the same as, the, as a chicken. I don't have a whole duck, but uh, the, I mean, I hate to say it, but the smartest thing you can do is to watch a video on YouTube or breaking something. It down a chicken. It's going to work the same way. You can do chicken or a duck. But um, the great thing is you can um, you know, take the breasts off for this recipe and then you can take the legs and you can slowly roast them or confit them uh, in some of the rendered fat. You see how we have all this fat that's coming off? You'll save this fat and then you'll put the duck legs in a container covered and slowly roast it and it'll cook in its own fat, which is a confit. I'm sure you've heard that term. And then you will have duck confit and you can make cassoulet or something. Look at that. Whoa, yum, that looks good. And now the trick is to kind of cook it most of the way on uh, on the, the side with the skin for maximum crisp. And then we do what's just called kissing the other side, essentially. I think I put just a little bit more water in here than I want, so I'm going to just, I always do that when I, my initial. Mommy, I like those. Dad, why are you putting that in there? Ooh, I don't know. hot. Okay, can you score the duck without skin on it? Don't, wait, wh wait, why, you don't want to have duck without skin on it. Colleen. Come on. There's no, don't, <laughs> don't cook duck without skin on it would be a good. Colleen, you that's just nice throw that duck at whoever sold it to you and tell them you want a new one. Do you? Cook it. If you don't have skin on your duck, just don't even worry. Don't score it because the only reason you score it is to render the fat. But if somebody sold you a duck breast with no skin on it, return it. Are you going for a certain temperature on the duck? I like my duck a little bit. I like medium rare to medium. So the same as like steaks. I'm going to cook this to about 135 and let it rest. We got cool stuff happening right now. Can everyone can see how beautiful uh, these ducks look. And you can see the difference. A little bit more of a golden color on the Pekin, whereas uh, a little bit more of a caramel color on the McGray. There's a lot of fat coming off of these guys. They shrunk up so much. Crazy. Our veggies are cooking. So 
I'm just gonna treat this just like I would a steak, okay? When it comes to like how to tell if it's done or not. I'm gonna let it go just a second longer because in my family, uh, we'd rather have it cooked just a little bit more than just a little bit less, right honey? Yeah, we're a medium family. We're not a rare family. Um, you can use parsnip. We're using turnips. Parsnip would be fantastic with this. A little bit out of season, but still fantastic. Well, careful, uh, Freddie. What? Oh, Dad was just throwing duck all over the place, and I didn't want you to get burned. What? Oh, Dad was just moving the duck around. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and rest these guys for about five minutes or so while we finish cooking our vegetables and make our pan sauce. Tanner's house. What about Carson's house? Do you want to go there? What about Snoop Dogg's house? Okay, so I'm going to drain. We're not saving this fat for anything. People get very worried we're putting that down our drain, but we're actually watch just out, putting it out. in our so cruddy jar. Hold on. Okay, so I got I've got there you go. Come here. You want to help me film? Come here. Oh. Schmutz in the pan uh, with a little bit of fat, the fat, and I'm going to take the shallot and garlic. Oh, I like that. Oh, don't touch that. That's duck skin and fat. And a little bit of the curry. Yeah, let's get that out of the way. I know, I wish we could have smell of vision on here too because it really is just, smells yummy in our house. I burned myself last night on uh, some chicken oil and it was really good dinner, but so holy crap. So we love crap. adding the curry at this point because like Hana said, that smell of vision it is toasting and lightly sweating. I'm gonna turn my pan back on. I turned it off just because it was so hot. Mommy. Mommy. Hey, bro, just because you got a house that sprinkles and sunshine doesn't mean you can act like a I think he bonked his head on that door. Okay, now next we're gonna do what's called deglaze. Watch out, watch out. Holy shit. Oh my God. That's insane. I was not prepared for that. You should prepare your camera person for that. So that was about a quarter cup of uh, Armagnac brandy. I just happen to have, you know, we're not really alcohol people, so we actually just had this to give to a friend. Oh, I do want to say though. Um, and then our orange juice is going in. Oh, okay. When I get a chance, let me. Let me know. And our lime juice. And what was that, my love? I, oh, oh. canard. Gabe's been down at the restaurants a lot lately trying to figure it out. Um, I just wanted to say that if you guys aren't drinkers, um, we don't drink. Um, and if you are drinkers, these are good with alcohol too, I'm sure. But this is the stuff we've been drinking. It's called Seed Lip. And it's amazing. It's kind of like a botanical blend. This one kind of reminds me of like gin. It has a little bit of juniper flavor in it. And then I haven't had that one yet. Um, but I mix mine with like LaCroix. You can also sometimes mix them with like a shrub. And right now I have carrot juice with turmeric and some um, like leftover fruit rinds from the orange juice that Gabe made and yeah it's non-alcoholic yes mm -hmm. so it's called mm -hmm. um seed lip and I will mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. it in yeah and there's a rep here in Portland and if you want to message you can get some sure you can pick it up or um yeah and it's good you can mix it with alcohol for sure it'd be amazing with alcohol I'm I'm guessing don't you wish? <laughs> I do wish. Okay, so veggies are cooking. Duck is resting. The bourbon hit the pan with the curry and the shallot. 
Um, the orange juice. Oh, we gotta get the honey in there. If you were, say, uh, a really great. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. That was the Mimi call, huh? Um, so, this technique say you were cooking a chicken breast and you cooked the chicken breast in this pan and you removed it. A great chicken, you know, you could make a pan sauce like a quick gravy. Um, like if you were to maybe like have broiled lemon juice with shallots and garlic and rosemary and chicken stock and do what I'm doing here instead of orange, all this orange juice, bring it down and finish it with a little bit of butter. Um, I'm adding honey for the sweetness to balance out the acidity of the lime juice. And then the, the honey also is a, um, you know, we're using kind of uh, deeply flavored sweeteners, the brown sugar and the honey, rather than just like a white sugar. Uh, that provides a little bit more layers of our flavors here. And duck is gamey, so it likes a little bit of sweet sauce. It likes that sour and that sweet flavor. So somebody wants you to come back to Napa for a pop-up restaurant. Okay. And um, which kind of duck do you prefer the most, the Millard or the Pekin? <clears throat> I like eating the pecan. Uh, I kind of, to be honest, um, maple leaf, if I'm gonna buy, I think is what you would see in the store. Uh, they didn't have it at my, at my meat premiere. So th normally it's a little bit bigger and plumper than this. I was a little bit disappointed, but I do uh, right now, I, I'm excited to eat the McGray because I haven't had it in a long time. And they're, they're different flavor profiles for sure. Um, we'll cut into them and we'll look at what they look like. But you can see, look at what's happening here. You see this wonderful uh, glaze happening. The water is evaporating. And they're getting, the vegetables are getting cooked. The butter is going to coat it with the sugar. Hey, look Gus. who it is. Our tallest, the tallest eight-year-old in the world. <laughs> How good does this look? I a lot of it. Do you need an allergy pill? How are you feeling? I, I almost sneezed there. I didn't really want to squeeze them. But so we're getting close, guys. Um, what is everybody's plans for Mother's Day? We're going to be doing... Um, Brunch here, I think, and hanging out in our yard is, are people going to send little gifts? How are you guys going to celebrate your mamas at home or far away? I'm curious. Are you going to get them all Freddy, Freddy Sprinkle shirts? Yeah. Please don't yell, okay? No one wants to hear that. One of Freddy's house Sprinkle shirts. Yeah, so we uh, made these. Of the proceeds goes to the James Beard Foundation, which is giving a lot of small restaurants help at this time of crisis, and a portion goes to help the uh, Portland Delano Club, which has been giving a lot of people stuck at home who have been drinking too much a lot of help this time. <laughs> and those are both. Uh, and plates for the people. Yep. And those are both causes that are near and dear to our hearts. Yep. And um, Jordan just came on and waved, and she is Thank the you, one Jordan. that drew the shirts, and she's amazing. She does all of these portraits of chefs on her Instagram, and they're beautiful she watercolors. Makes, she, she also makes the recipe tiles for the dishes. Yeah, she helps us a lot so with here's this. Here's the mint. I just picked the leaves, and then here's the calendula. Uh, edible flowers are fun when used with a little bit of restraint, I think, or if the flavor matches the dish, not just for the hell of it, but I've got these guys. The shirts are gonna be available on- You can on... order it, follow the link in my bio, and you can pre-order it. The Alano Club is actually handling all of the- uh, I the think logistics. that's the right Instagram thing, because it didn't pop up when I was typing it, but it's on Plates for the People, I put it on my stories, a link to it. Gabe has it on his stories, and um, yeah, and so you could buy. They're $25. You have to pre-order because obviously, like, none of us had the money to, like, fund that um, ahead of time. So, yeah, um, they're not really through the restaurant. Uh, Lindsay got hers. I ordered one for everyone in our family, and um, it wasn't too bad. Like, yeah. We're all gonna wear them together. 
You could definitely use yuzu zest, right? Yes. That would be incredible. Yeah, if you have fresh yuzu, then Use, yuzu it. it up. Uh, the other thing we have to garnish this dish is some orange segments. Uh, that's gonna add, we've got the cooked orange, we had some blood orange and some kara kara, and kara kara is like a cross between a grapefruit and navel orange. Um, and so we have these fresh orange segments that we're gonna garnish this dish with. So here's our palette of garnishes. What's pa Parcel PDX, Pedro Honey? You have a shop too. We should, are you have anything on your shop that we should okay. get for Mother's Day? So our sauce is kind of gently coming down here. Our duck is still very much warm and in business. I've got my teensy weensy tub of Jacobson salt ready to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jacobson Salt Factory on the beach is an amazing place uh, we visited. Yeah, There's we actually a deer there named Bucky who is friendly and you can pet him. He's amazing. He lost his mommy in a car accident and so they've been taking care of him since he was a baby and he is my spirit animal and I love him more than anything okay. on earth. So I mixed the oranges with some batons, chive baton, which is just like a little one inch piece of chive. Chive baton. Fancy. And now this sauce, you can see, you can tell when something's reducing down by the, the size of the bubbles. It's getting bigger. Uh, it's not quite there. You, you'd you be surprised. You're going to bring it down quite a bit before we, what's called, mount the butter. Mount? Oh my gosh. This has got to be a G-rated show, babe. Uh, can you not do soccer in here right now while we're trying to... Work on our side hustle, homie. Mm. Here you go, babe. You want to taste this? So this is without the butter, but so this liquid tastes fantastic. Oh wow! It's bright. It's got the spice element of. Hey, Freddie. Zip it or rip it, bro. And then what the butter that we stir into this go. is gonna do? Hey, that's it. You're done. Rah! The butter, the butter that we stir into this is going to give it a velvety texture and a viscosity that, Sorry, coats, guys. that coats your mouth. Hope I didn't okay. make anyone nauseous with that filming. So you can see this right here. And this is an important technique. We're going to turn the pan off. Uh. Oh Stop my it, gosh. He, it's like he doesn't listen or something. It's so I've weird. I've got these two pieces of butter here. And we're just going to kind of, you want to kind of move them around and shake them and stir them. I turn the pan off, you don't, you want it to kind of melt in while it emulsifies. And you don't want, you don't want to end up with a greasy broken sauce. You fell down? Yeah. Well, I feel like that's karma. Okay. Pretty. Put a couple chives in there. Now, should we plate this dish? Yes. Okay. Let's see if we can make it look nice and roll it off. Okay. That's hot. Whose journal is this in the kitchen? Hey. You know, that's really rude. Oh, Stop don't it. break my plant. Stop it, Freddie. Come on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of take on my, on the left side of my plate, a little bit of wine. And we've got, when you have vegetables, to provide a natural kind of architectural Shape. Shape, and uh, they give you kind of, they follow the roadmap of what the vegetables are saying to you. Was, <laughs> and this is a real easy way to make like a restaurant quality looking dish at home. And then I've got my duck that I've rested. I think that's a nice that's pretty. cook for me. 
I mean, I definitely think Freddie's tagline is, we don't put the knife on our face. But that's karma, Freddie, works just as good. Everyone's just gonna have to get out their Sharpies and write whatever they want on their own shirts. Because I guess printing on the back is extra. So, I laid my duck out. You see how I laid them, cut some of them facing for plating purposes. With the flesh up, some with the skin up. I've got this wonderful sauce. If you're, if you're going to go ahead and plate, then you can put, you don't need to smother it. You can always give your guests a little bit more than by your guests, I mean your kids or your wife or husband. I'm gonna go ahead and. Oh, Jordan, okay. Put a little bit of fleur de sel. And then we've got some of these orange segments, which are gonna give us that nice. You got your batons on there. I got the batons. Phew. The car car. The phone is like so hot. I don't know and why. And the blood. And then some of these tinky mint leaves to play in here. And we're just using what we have. No intricate garnishes here. Just fun stuff. Stuff that's like got good color. And then I'm just going to kind of let it rain these flowers. The recipe's in the highlights on um, his Instagram. And that is a restaurant quality duck l'orange served at home. That is beautiful. So vibrant. Gluten free. It's actually it's got that butter in it, but other than that, it's actually a fairly healthy res uh, recipe. You've got a little bit of sugar, but um, it's not overly fatty. It's not full of carbs. Um, that's a light dinner. And if you were to serve this with like. Um, I would maybe if I wanted like a starch or a side dish, I would think about like maybe a wild rice pilaf would be really wonderful with that. Oh yeah, rice pilaf would be so um, good. And that would be a great thing to serve on the side. But the way that this is going to eat, really clean, really bright, and you're going to get a lot of different textures happening. You're going to get a lot of different textures happening right here on the vegetables. You've got the different layers of citrus. There's lemon in the vegetables. There's lime and orange in the sauce. There's fresh orange on top to really make that rounded citrus feel. You've got the curry in the sauce and then the cumin kind of bringing what's happening here and what's happening here together. And then you've got the nice uh, floral, uh, depth floral right there on top, so. Yeah, and there are so many edible flowers. Like if you just Google, uh, you probably have stuff in your yard or you could just, Oh my gosh. So, I just, before you leave, I just want to give you guys. You guys! Kind of you're gonna have to move out if you guys don't stop. Get out of my damn yard! <laughs> so then this is the Pekin. Get out. Get out of here. Get out of my damn yard! <laughs> okay, so, this is the Pekin. Guys, I'm seriously talking here. Can you seriously here. stop? But he's in the no, it's you. You're the problem. He was fine. You're McGray, right oh, here. You and you've born. got these kind of thick, fatty pieces here. Crispy, delicious. And then your pecan, a little bit more of a muted color. Uh, like I said, a little bit more of the veal. And then you can see the fat layers a lot thinner. Um, equally delicious. Slightly different textures. Oh, somebody ordered the seed lip today. That's awesome. Awesome. Let's eat, babe. All right. Um, okay, guys. Well, thank you so much. And sorry about the background noise. We just like, you know. I know. We, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. They're just getting really rowdy. Everybody's losing it. We're all sick of each other. And now Gabe's like going back and working in the restaurants, trying to get things cleaned up and organized there. So I'm alone, trapped here in this house, trying to homeschool three kids. This one's a good one. That's the best kid. That's the best real guy.